So, like we promised to each other, that we'll try to derive this equation, <coughs> which can be derived by a very simple logic, taking the uh, definitions of uh, the system. So, the system is uh, that, first of all, I say that in this case, A, the acceleration is a constant, constant. Acceleration is constant. It does not vary. Which? With time. So as long as this motion is there, under constant acceleration, we can say that like uh, before, the plot of the acceleration versus time was a line parallel that is even at time t is equal to zero or at any other time t the value of the a in meter per second square per second square and this is second it remains parallel to the x-axis on the xy graph so a is a constant a is a constant, that means for all values of t, A is constant. It means that A which is normally defined as, A which I define as dv dt, the instantaneous value, the instantaneous value at any instant, this is equal to a average value which we can define a average it's very simple a average is equal to our a and this is equal to <coughs> delta v upon delta t this is equal to the final value v2 minus the initial value v1 divided by the final value of time t2 minus t1. Okay? Of course, meter per second square. So, now I define my boundary conditions are the constraints to boundary conditions. The boundary conditions are that the initial value of time is 0. T1 is equal to 0. And at that time, this V1 is the initial velocity which we'll write as U. And T2 is a variable T and V2 is the variable V. Very simple. But bear in mind, right now the boundary conditions are defining only for the times and the velocities. I can also say that at this time the value of X was equal to X0 and the value of uh, x at this time is equal to, let me write it, no problem. Here x1 is equal to x0 and here x2 is equal to x. Of course, x, v and t are variables, this, this and this. They are constraints. They are our constraints. So, if we take this set of boundary conditions and put in this value, then I find that I can write A, therefore, A is equal to V2. V2 is V and minus V1. V1 is U 
upon t minus 0. So which gives us the equation? This gives the equation a is equal to v minus u the change in the value of the velocity divided by t. Or I can write simply that uh, at at therefore therefore <coughs> at is equal to v minus u or I can write from here just taking the terms from left to right and right to left etc. We change like this and we rearrange the term v minus u is equal to at it's better or I can write that v is equal to u plus at. The first equation of motion, simple motion, but accelerated motion. <coughs> v is equal to u plus at has been derived. Okay. <coughs> now, I can write this as I said that this is at is equal to v minus u. Hmm? So, I can also say these things, set of equations I can uh, recall any time. And therefore, now we go to derive the second equation. <coughs> The second equation, we start with uh, the definition of velocity, okay? Like here, we started with the definition of acceleration, we will start with the definition of velocity. So the velocity that we have, <coughs> V is defined as delta x upon delta t or this velocity I can write as uh, the displacement x2 minus x1 divided by t2 minus t1. So this I can, by substituting the values that I have here in these uh, boundary conditions are the constraints, are the limits of the system that I have defined to you. This will turn out to be equal to x minus x0, x minus x0 divided by t minus 0. <coughs> so I get the formula therefore by rearranging terms we get r multiply both sides by t so I get vt on this side this is equal to x minus x naught but remember I didn't tell you earlier this is an average velocity Average velocity. Average velocity. So this is not the final v, which is we are taking the average velocity, and the average velocity into two is t is equal to x minus zero, which is the displacement of the system. Which I can also write as this equation I can write better x minus x zero is equal to we average into t. Now what is v average? v average is not the same as this v. But instead this v average I can say that if I plot the graph for that we have obtained over here v is equal to u plus at so I'll get v here I'm taking a positive value of u here this value could be 0 this value could be negative and here of course the t the acceleration is constant 
and I get a linear equation like this. <coughs> Where at this time the velocity is v and at this time the velocity is equal to u, the initial velocity. So now let's see what is the average velocity. The average velocity will be if I this velocity plus this velocity divided by 2. So v average v average will be equal to u plus v divided by 2. And so this is what we are going to substitute here and which gives us that this x1 is x0 x1 is x0, so I'll write better here, x1 is x0, x1 is x0, or x1 is x0. This turns out to be, hmm, what? v average into t. So u plus v divided by 2, this multiplied by t. Okay, now what I can do is we have to do a little jugglery of things and this I will write, I can write like this that this is u plus v minus u plus u. Because you can see that minus u plus u is equal to 0. So I'm we are just adding it, this thing and this divided by 2 into t. Now what I do is I shift this u from here to here. So I'll write u plus u. This becomes equal to 2u divided by 2 plus v minus u divided by 2 total multiplied by the time t. So you can see with this little bit of jugglery I have got this equal to u plus half v minus u this multiplied by t and the whole thing multiplied by t. Oh sorry, sorry. v minus u divided by 2 multiplied by the whole thing multiplied by t. But from this equation you can see that v minus u is equal to 80. From this equation v minus u is equal to 80. So I'll just substitute, this is equal to u plus half a t into t. So I can write x minus x naught here simply as this is equal to u t plus half a t square. So therefore, here is an equation in the final form that x minus x naught which I wrote as s also. So x minus x naught r is this is delta x the displacement is equal to u t plus half a t square. So this is the equation which we call the equation number 2. <coughs> okay. Of the many variables, many things that we have, in this equation, what is the missing term? The missing term is the velocity. And in this equation, what is the missing term? The missing term is the displacement. 
So these two equations, they define now, I can make a plot. I will make a plot and that is x minus x0 is equal to ut x minus x0 on this axis and there are two parts of it. This is uh, x minus x0, two parts, ut initial velocity, here is u, suppose it is there, the so ut plus half a d square. This is a linear path and this is a non-linear path. The two parts together, we can say that uh, if we start from here at t is equal to 0, t is equal to 0, this is the 0 and then we start, it will go like this as the time increases and the second part is half a d square and uh, if suppose u is equal to 0 then it's easy to plot uh, the other graph and uh, in that case I will have a non-linear graph so the two of them together and I will get a non-linear graph again linear plus non-linear will give us a non-linear graph <coughs> so these two equations let us call them equation number one and equation number two or let's call it a for apple and b for ball So the third equation that we have v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s r a x minus x naught a x minus x naught here instead of s we can obtain it very easily with the help of a simple algebraic uh, equation that is what we do is it's very simple I square this okay uh, equation and then we will see as to what we obtain and substitute this equation over there ok so allow me to now rub it off and write here I, I need just this space suppose the equation we have v is equal to u plus at is square both left and right hand side is square so what happens that v square is equal to u plus 80 whole square and as you know that I'll write a plus b whole square how much is that a plus b whole square this we write as a plus b whole square is equal to how much normally and uh, our up board classes are uh, uh, where i was a student my teacher used to say that a is, this is equal to a square plus b square plus 2ab this is what i grew with but now I'd like to write it as equal to instead my way a square plus 2ab plus b square and I would like to write it uh, another way this is a square uh, a square a square just to make you ponder into b to the power of 0 plus 2 a 2 minus 1 b 0 plus 1 power plus a power 0 a power 0 and 2 minus uh, 2 2 minus 2 into b to the power of 0 plus 2 which of course will turn out to be like this 
a square plus 2ab plus b square. Okay. We're using that sequence in the sense that in this algebraic thing, the uh, powers of A will keep on decreasing and the powers of B will keep on increasing. So I can write, therefore, that my V square, because V is equal to U plus A T, so V square becomes equal to U square plus 2U A T plus A T whole square which is another term u square plus 2 u a t plus a square t square and this I can write as u square plus 2 a I'll take common and if I take this common 2 a then I get u t and plus half a t square and this becomes equal to u square plus 2 a x minus x zero because from equation number two from equation number two what I obtain is that ut plus half a t square is equal to x minus x zero. Therefore, the third equation turns out to be equal to v square is equal to u square plus 2 a x minus x zero. And in uh, the musical form that I told you before, I can write this as, I can write this as v square is equal to v square is equal to u square plus 2 a s which I can also and I will when I teach you about the quantic energy and the potential energy huh, in that case I will show you this uh, equation uh, if I just multiply all these terms with half m, so this will become half mv square is equal to half mu square plus half into 2as 2ma s and 2 and 2 cancel out m a is the force s is the displacement so this is the potential energy of the system this is the initial quantic energy this is the final quantic energy so in the case of uh, conservation of energy we can show that from the law of conservation of energy i can get the kinematical equation v square is equal to u square plus 2s. <coughs> now, I can uh, also obtain these two master equations a and b. From there I have derived this third equation which is also a very useful equation by using the integration process. That is, uh, I'll do that but before that I will have to uh, give you some because I'm also addressing the bio biology students who are not supposed to be well versed in uh, differentiation and integration. So I'll give you some uh, tits and bits of this and that and we can derive the same set of equations by using the calculus. Mm? So next time I'll do these uh, derivations with calculus and uh, after that I explain how the things how the things are done so thank you very much for deriving this equation 
and remember the trick the trick over here this trick is very important so that we come from here to here and here to here and easily like that so in the next lecture I will uh, tell you how these equations, these two equations can be derived with the help of, of course, this equation is derived only with the help of these two equations A and B, by squaring that and then obtaining the results. Hope you have enjoyed a little bit, have now more confidence and you know how these equations uh, are obtained. This is the musical equation v square is equal to u square plus 2as. This is the musical equation that I said s is equal to ut plus half at square. And there is a lot of musing in that. Uh, and v is equal to u plus at. Okay. Thank you very much. See you.